Well, let's talk more uh, about the markets. Prominent Morgan Stanley bear Mike Wilson out with a new note uh, this morning. In it, he says sentiment and positioning has turned outright bullish as both retail and institutional investor sentiment has reached its highest level in over two years. However, given our fundamental view on growth, we find it hard to get on board with the current excitement and narrative supporting it. Uh, while breath is stabilized, it remains far from supportive of higher prices uh, for us right now. Cameron Dawson is chief investment officer uh, at New Edge uh, Wealth. We haven't seen, um, we'll get to you in just a second, Cameron. We haven't seen Mike Wilson in a while. His, his worst case scenario is 3,000 on the S&P. He doesn't sound like he's changing his mind at this point. Says, he's 14, he's, throwing, he's, he's almost, it, it's almost a 50% move from where he was talking about. So he's obviously the scrambling and on the says. wrong side of things. But, you know, we, we got to do it. You know, you have your beliefs. Let's talk to Cameron about it. Cameron, you uh, are probably not now saying buy with both hands. You're probably not saying that. But have you uh, moved up the uh, where you think that we, if we do, uh, if this is a relief rally and, mm -hmm. and not a permanent new bull market, are you above the October lows now? For how, how far down do you think the market needs to go to test yeah. uh, support? I think that's a really good point that as we push out the recession timing, meaning that it's not definitely a first half 23 thing, could be more about a 2024 scenario, that the we're starting from a higher base, meaning that we may not retest those October lows from 2022, but it doesn't negate the fact that we do have a market that's very extended in the short term. You could see an 8% point pull back in the NASDAQ and just be back to the 50-day moving average. That doesn't mean that the uptrend is over. It just means that we've moved very far, very fast, so we might have some digestion. I mean, the, 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 as excited as we've gotten about pushing through 4,200, which was the high end of the range, and we are well above that now, above 4,400, I could envision something where we don't hit new all-time highs on the S&P for a year could be 18 months. Could I, I have no idea. It, 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 we're, we're not necessarily just headed to new highs near term. We could be, though. I think that the, the reality is that we're bumping up against a very real valuation resistance. We're now at about 19 and a half times forward earnings, which already reflect a big recovery. You have about a mid-teens recovery in earnings forecasted in already for the next four quarters. So you're bumping up against that resistance in valuation. So you'd have to assume we go into a new valuation paradigm for us to hit a new all-time high sometime within the next six months. Although if rates aren't going, if, if they are finished or just have one or two left, you're not worried as much about multiple contraction at that point. So you could stay at 19. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's interesting that, that, you know, 2023 was going to be the, the year of no earnings growth. Yeah. And then we were going to get earnings growth in 24. Now everything's pushed back because we haven't had the recession. So is, is, 20, is 24 going to be flat? Or if, if it's going to be flat, we need all those estimates need to come down. Yeah, I think the point that just because you're not seeing a recession in 2023 doesn't mean we do not have one in 2024. Maybe it does make it more likely that we've just been too early in this game. The thing that has surprised us the most this year is just how little the market has actually cared about the Fed and about interest rates. So if you look at the pricing for Fed policy rates at the end of December of this year, they're up about 150 basis points from the March low. But valuations for tech stocks are up 30% since that point. Tech stocks, growth stocks, have not cared one single bit about the Fed policy path. So if the Fed policy path becomes easy, how much of that is already priced in?